Okay, senor. Everything good on your end? Everything's great here. Hi, Barry. Good. How are so, you, Philip? Good. Uh, I just wanted, I figured we'd done a couple episodes, but, you know, for, for those folks who maybe didn't start with episode one, I just wanted to reintroduce you. Um, we have Perry Ercolino, bespoke shoemaker from Doylestown, Pennsylvania, USA, kindly um, sharing some of his time with us today. And if you haven't checked out the previous, well, was it four, five episodes? I, I highly recommend it. So much stuff. I can't believe how much um, you've shared. Really, I, I really can't believe. It. I, I had no idea you'd be so open and, and have so much to, to share um, when I started this little project. So, um, highly. All the shoe information you <laughs> didn't know who to ask and don't really care to know the answer. Well, <clears throat> some people do care, and that's why that's why we're here. So. Uh, Exactly. Uh, so glad to have you aboard. And actually, I probably should have included it in the introduction at one time, which is, I guess, a good segue to where I'm, I'm headed. Um, at one point, you, uh, well, I don't know if partner is the right word, but you had collaborated. That That's the uh, fashion terminology these days. You collaborated with the J. Peterman Company um, in yes. get, getting, getting your shoes. So um, I don't really know this story, but, but it seemed like, you know, you had a, a, a bit to share. So um, if you don't mind, how about you kind of share the background and, and, and for maybe, cause I don't know if Jay Peterman's still around uh, maybe you can give some background of uh, when this was and what Jay Peterman was like. I only know from Seinfeld, but I um, mean, you were there, you, oh, you yeah. should know, but um, you, you maybe just give us the, the whole backstory and, and how you got involved in um or how Jay Peterman got involved with some Perry Ercolino shoes and, you know. Yes. So it's a little bit of a uh, long winded story as uh, stories can be sometimes in, in the shoe biz. But um, many years ago, a gentleman that I had met who lived on the outskirts of town uh, worked kind of, you know, near, near the town here and used to come in and we used to, well, we got to know each other uh, and have lunch together every once in a while and time would permit. And he was one of the uh, original old uh, um, uh, Madison Avenue uh, advertising men from, uh, you know, the based on the series, I guess, was it Mad Men? Uh, oh, yeah. Wow. Uh, that okay. was on TV for uh, for a while. But anyway, yes. Yeah, so he, he, he goes back that originally, I guess, when he, uh, you know, got out of the university studies and whatnot, paying his dues. Uh, so he was telling me the story about a guy that he used to know in the advertising business. I can't remember if they worked together in the same agency or whether this person was with a different agency, but he eventually wound up introducing me to this man by the name of Don Staley. <laughs> and Don? Okay. Sorry, sorry. Don, I thought you were going to go say Donald Sterling is that Matt, the Madman? I thought I was like, wow, that that's so close. But sh I'm going to shut up. Sorry. Go, go ahead. Well, I never I never saw the show, so I don't know who, who, who the, the bit players were. But uh, this gentleman's name is Don Staley, and he was uh, apparently a fairly well known uh, ad man uh, back in the day, and. He eventually went out and got this idea, I think, with another gentleman, and they started the J. Peterman catalog. Uh, and I, um, as I said, got introduced uh, sort of long distance uh, via telephone to to Mr. Staley, and we talked about some ideas. And I'm, I'm trying to remember. I, I, I'm almost certain at some point when I was – Working in New York regularly, I we met somewhere and sat down and had some food and talked about some ideas about having uh, shoes done for the catalog, for the J. Peterman catalog, which I eventually consented to do. And, uh, you know, they how good they were, at, uh, I guess, where his uh, advertising expertise was, uh, adding these little storylines to the various products and things like that in their catalogs. So... Uh, I know at, at uh, 
the J.P. Peterman catalog eventually became the brunt of uh, Seinfeld jokes and whatnot. <laughs> but it, 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 it did truly exist once upon a time. So um, shortly, I'm trying to remember exactly the timelines, but sort of foggy now. But uh, in the run-up to making the movie Titanic, the J. Peterman people were in discussions with whoever was responsible for making the movie Titanic and about doing some clothing and some shoes knocked off from the uh, types that were supposedly worn by various actors and actresses in the movie. And they asked me if I wanted to participate. And I'm trying to remember exactly. I, I believe Mr. Staley was out of the J. Peterman business uh, at that time or sold his interest. I, uh, as I said, it's in the way back machine. So my, my memory is <laughs> not exactly real clear on it. So working with uh, post-production and everything else with, the, the people who were responsible for the Titanic stuff and then also to get some of these products into the J. Peterman catalog. So I got into cahoots with uh, that end of it as well. And they ordered a, t uh, a ton of product. And as it turned out, the uh, Peterman people up and went bankrupt in uh <laughs> And uh, right towards the end of all of this, they filed for bankruptcy. And, uh, of course, nobody got paid for all the work that we did, uh, I being one of the people who, uh, you know, took it on the chin, as it were, when uh, these kinds of things happen. So that's the story of my short history with Jay Peterman. <laughs> well, so... Um, um... Let me get this straight. They, they you you were able to get <clears throat> your shoes in the J. Peterman catalog, and I guess following Correct. that, you got involved yes, in, in I, Titanic. Right. So we were making we I, I was making uh, designing knockoffs of the some of the shoes that um, the guys wore. Basically, was more my my area of expertise on that. So the the spats that uh, uh -huh. the guys wore at, in that era. So that's what the Peterman people wanted to have in their catalog. So that's what I wound up uh, designing uh -huh. and, okay. and, and having made in a, in a factory that I was so uh, associated with. So okay. uh, unfortunately, as I said, everything went south. <laughs> Right. Well, and um, it sounds like a Seinfeld rest, as episode. Say, <laughs> so not only did the boat sink, I practically sunk with it. So, oh, geez. Well, I mean, I guess now it's a sort of a. I mean, what, what do they say? Um, comedy is tragedy plus time. I guess sort of. It's it's been long enough. We can sort of laugh at it. I, I don't know about. I mean, I guess I wasn't involved, so it's easy for me to say that. But um, potentially. Uh, it's just a funny anecdote in your life now, hopefully. You seem it, like, uh, hopefully, yes. yes. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I, it still still sort of rubs me the wrong way as uh, how people can... Uh, and then you never to return to New York since. That's It's like that <laughs> <laughs> feeling. Well, um, I'm, not quite that, I'm not quite like that, but uh, thank God I still love the city. But uh, it, as it were, the whole thing just uh, obviously put a kind of a... Uh, financial burden on me, obviously, but uh, anyway, things, stuff happens, and you just gotta try to move on from it. And it was a long time ago, and yes, reflecting on it, it's uh, it was yeah, kind of leaves a sour taste in your mouth. But now it's as I said, it's so far in the rearview mirror. That it's, it's just as they say, just another run in the pantyhose of life, right? <laughs> Well, that's a new one. I'm going to have to steal that. <laughs> well, so I guess, I mean, it doesn't seem like it was a very long-lived collaboration. So, I mean, are, are like Perry Ercolino, J. Peter Minch, who's like collector's items now? I, I wonder. Maybe. Uh, you know, I honestly couldn't tell you, to be perfectly honest with you. I, you know, it's about two and a half years. Mm-hmm. 
uh, that we worked together, if memory serves me well, which sometimes it does not. So um, <laughs> don't quote me on that. But um, I mean, you know, for the catalog itself, prior to the Titanic situation, I think we did pretty well um, in the in the collaboration, it's, uh, as I said, it was just this uh, final chapter in that saga that uh, sort of you know, dinged everybody and uh, kind of left things in a in kind of a funky place. Right. Well, I mean, I mean, that's kind of a, I guess, interesting, um, I don't know, anecdote, because, you know, it was a very long time ago. I mean, I know I saw the J. Peterman um uh, spread in you know in in your workshop, but a very long time ago, I remember reading about you it, and uh, I don't know someone had mentioned like, oh, like I found Perry Ercolino, Jay Peterman, you know, she was like, are they like um, counterfeit or, or whatever? It was like it's just a, just a I don't know. No, they are uh, they are the real, real they're the real deal. Okay, it's, it's, so I uh, I I do know somebody once upon a time called me many years ago that also found a pair, I think online somewhere or uh, what's that eBay, maybe I, I it, again, as I said, it's, it's kind of vague in my, <laughs> in my gray matter these days. So, but yeah, they, they, they're out there. I, I might even have a pair or two still sitting around here and uh, in a carton. So, uh, yeah, but yes, they do exist still somewhere. Hmm. Wow. That, that, that's thing. I mean, <clears throat> I don't know if necessarily. Um, I mean, well, there, there was a couple things that y you had mentioned um, that, well, I, I thought were. God, God dang it! You you mentioned something that really caught my eye, but I didn't want to interrupt, so I let you, I let you continue the story. But what what was it? Well, I ah, forget it. Anyway, I guess <laughs> the the thing well, is. Well, if you remember, just ask. I I will. Um, I guess you have done consulting and maybe other co collaborations before. Um, mm -hmm. I, I don't know how, how much um, necessarily you'd like to get into it, but, you know, I, I, I saw Stefano Bemmer. I guess he has a, apparently he has, or not he, but the the, the company with his name has Correct. A, a New York shoe store, which um, I think in the past week, is actually had had a uh, um, advertisement or whatnot that they are closing up their they're moving they're moving stores so they're moving somewhere else in New York City, and you know, okay. you, you mentioned um, you know laying around in your shop. I at one point I spotted mm -hmm. a, a Stefano Bender. Yeah, you did. Or Eric Lou. Yes. Co collaboration. So. Yes. 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 Yeah. I I uh, met. Stefano, who oh gosh, again, many years ago, uh, and um, to the time when he had his uh, his workshop uh, across the Arno River in uh, Firenze, and we uh, spent, oh, I don't know, three or four days together talking about some different things. It's back when his brother Mario was, uh, you know, was a family business more or less than anything else, and a uh, really, really nice man, I, and I know... Uh, one time when we were out having lunch, um, not too far from his uh, workshop, that uh, we were chatting and uh, he was telling me about his diabetes and uh, how he struggled back then uh, with keeping himself healthy and trying to keep himself focused and things like that. You know, he was on some pretty serious medication at the time, but he was such a gracious young man and um i know he had a lot of uh, ideas of wanting to move forward and uh, get some uh, business going in the united states which is why i was there uh specifically so it's unfortunate that he his life ended uh, so uh somewhat abruptly and uh, so young uh, he, but he was uh um, a good driving force for some of the, uh, I would say, early stages of uh, bespoke making and uh, shoe design in in Italy. That uh, you know, up until that time, there weren't 
you know, Italy wasn't exactly known as a, as a hotbed of, uh, of bespoke making per se. The, the British still had pretty much that moniker somewhat to themselves. And uh, I mean, there are certainly some good makers around Italy that, that do very uh, beautiful work. But uh, he was the one that was sort of elevating it. And I, I think his, you know, having his, uh, his favorite well-known student there once upon a time uh, also uh, kept some good feathers in their cap as well. But, um, you know, after he passed away, uh, the, the, I know his uh, wife was not able to hold on to the business and had to wind up selling it. His brother went uh, his own way as well and uh, still does some very nice work uh, to this day. So the the business has changed uh, somewhat dramatically. Well, maybe not dramatically. It's, it, you know, still carries his name. Uh, I just don't know uh, anything about the principals that own it. Um, so that's what Stefano and I tried to do many years ago uh, is just to try to build up a, a presence uh, in New York uh, to get him uh, a little more known in the U.S. market. But as I said, uh, fate had other plans for him, so such was life. Yes, that is that is sad. I mean, he was fairly uh, young, or he he was fairly young when yes. uh, that all happened. Yeah, so um, that yeah, unfortunate, unfortunate story and unfortunate end. Uh, but I guess you know he he eventually did get some recognition in New York because I had no idea there was a store. Um, so it was only yes. just this week I, I saw that he had um, yeah there was a Stefano Bemmer store in uh, or Stefano mm-hmm. Bemmer store in in New York City. So. Yeah. So yeah. So the corporate entity that that owns that, and I don't know the the particular players in that entity uh, who, who who bought it from his uh, his wife and whatnot. But um, yeah, they they have uh, I think some um, you know pretty good financial resources, and uh, like anybody else, like Silvana Latanzi years ago, you know, trying to put in a or did put in a little boutique up on the uh, kind of on the west side, I think it was uh, once upon a time. But you know, it, it's you know bespoke shoes are not an impossible sell, but it's 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 difficult. So um, I don't know how uh, how they're going to fare, where they're going to move within the city. But uh, it's uh, you know it's an ambitious thing. It's certainly in this economy. So I uh, you know wish that, you know. I guess there's room for everybody. A little bit of there's a little bit of something for everybody out there. So uh, yeah, you know, kudos to them for uh, you know trying to trying to make a go of it, uh, especially in these difficult times. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and and I guess um, you know I, I actually wanted to mention something about or get your thoughts about um, th- this year and 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 what's happened. Although um, maybe before um, before I I jump there. I was kind of curious. I mean, you have mentioned before that you um, have consulted and, and, you know, it seems like you attempted uh, or, or you, you were able to collaborate. And in some cases you attempted to collaborate and maybe things didn't work out. Um, I'm, I'm curious uh, as a, you know, bespoke sugar maker that you kind of fly solo and, and work alone. Um is that kind of something that's in the back of your head to collaborate or, or consult and work with other folks? And I you know, like, I mean, is that something people often reach out to you for, or is that, no, those are just all one-offs and I happen to like know, know of all of them that you've mentioned already. Well, I, I guess in a perfect world or my, in my, in my mind and how I try to figure out, pardon me, a path forward for um, my quote unquote brand, so to speak, and um, my ideas. I would love to be able to collaborate with a, with a small maker and get uh, shoes done, obviously under my label uh, or a collaborative label uh, in a, in a ready-made or an MTO kind of a situation wouldn't necessarily be 
full bespoke, but uh, could certainly be offered. Uh, the question is, you know, finding a workroom that has some capacity that would want to do that and has the ambition to want to do that. But a lot of these places are, you know, kind of busy with their own stuff. And uh, there sometimes is not capacity there or enough um, space, so to speak, uh, to introduce that kind of an idea and have to you know, work within the confines of the U.S. market. Uh, the, uh, the U.S. market is, is, is a difficult, kind of expensive proposition. So to to get a proper collaboration where people want to have a presence here on these shores is uh, can be daunting for a small company uh, for like what I'm trying to uh, seek out for my ideas so it's um remains to be seen and as you alluded to in this environment the way things are until a lot of this uh covid starts to dissipate uh, after next year and the world gets back to some semblance of order uh have to try to perhaps revisit that idea again but uh consequently as i said the there, there are people out there. It's just a matter of finding the right partner who has uh, some ambition about it and uh, isn't isn't too worried about uh, you know taking a taking a little bit of a leap. So, mm-hmm. as I said, that's that's my my hope for the future, so that I can at least have some bit of a legacy uh, left, or uh, or not. So we'll see what the next chapter brings. Mm-hmm. Well, I think you you made a good point when you said partner and and collaborate because really, um, it, it is. I mean, it, it's it's not so hard necessarily to maybe find factories where you'll just be another customer. I mean, that that's kind of mm-hmm. easy. Um, but but in that case, it really uh, can be difficult to to collaborate and and really work together. It, in that case, it is kind of just a one way street. It's just like okay, you tell me what to do, I, I do it. And that's it. And to have any more back and forth than what's necessary for many factories. I'm not necessarily sure about shoes, but I'm taking experiences from other clothing factories. They they don't really want to deal with it. They just want to, you know, bada bing, bada boom, just kind of make it, get it done. And and, and it's like, you know, that. So, I mean, collaboration is, I mean, the the few successes I think, uh, or little successes I've had, certainly I think we're... um, collaborations that we had that built a relationship and kind of understood what I was looking for. And I kind of understood what they were going through and try to make things work, but it, it's difficult. Like, like you said, it's, they're not easy to find, but you know, who knows, maybe someone out there will be listening. Someone, some factory owner will be listening and just think, apparently, you know, I like what he has to say. He's, he's my kind of guy. I'm, I'm going to take that leap. I don't know. Well, it is, we'll I mean, it's, it is, uh, I think it's something that is, uh, uh sort of if you want to just say it's 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 kind of business as usual in in the in the fashion industry uh as you alluded to with uh you know trying to get certain things done and i have you know a friend who you know tried to get a particular kind of garment done uh you know using uh onshore factories uh onshore meaning within the united states and consequently he just couldn't do it because and the same thing happens in the shoe industry, whether it be here or whether it be somewhere else. You know, certain forms are made, certain patterns are cut, certain uh, die cutting materials are, are are formed, and things of that nature. And they're kind of, um, sort of set in stone, if you want to mm-hmm. use that term. So yeah, unless you can use their existing patterns and uh, uh, sewing settings and things like that, it can be very problematic to sort of change horses in the middle of the stream, so to speak, and upset the the balance of the workflow and whatnot. Now, with computer-aided design, CAD, CAM, and some of those other things, it can get a little easier to do that, but not everybody has the capacity to invest in that kind of technology so that you can kind of do things a little more on the fly, so to speak. So it's it's a 
it certainly is a balancing act. And as I said, you have to find somebody who can kind of be lean and mean and who kind of doesn't mind thinking out of the box a bit. So that's kind of my general uh, sense of things uh, when it comes to collaborations. So the the bigger the you know the bigger the player the the, the more set in in their ways that they are, and uh, so you, as I said, sometimes finding a, a smaller group of people uh, has a little more flexibility and doesn't mind looking at things a little differently and saying, well, you know, we give, we get. It can be a two-way street, so it's just you have to find somebody, as I said, with a little bit of an open mind and somebody who's uh, not intimidated by the U.S. market. So that's that's really some of the some of the biggest uh, roadblocks that I've heard over the years when I've spoken to different people in different uh, workshop settings, factory settings, etc. Well. I suppose we we are still around. We'll keep looking, and who knows? Maybe true love will be out there for us, right? It's you never know. Yes, it wasn't Sweet the ones that you <laughs> the ones that you've seen weren't meant to be. But when when the time comes, you'll you'll find the one. We'll we'll, we'll see. It, potential fairy tale ending, but anything's possible. Mm-hmm. Um, Anything and, is possible. <laughs> um, I I you know going back to this year and the economy and all that. I mean, I have, I guess, worked with some folks and, and, and met some folks, and I've worked with them for some time. And certainly this year has made an impact for, for them and, and for probably lots of folks in the clothing fashion industry. I mean, I, I guess, I think maybe it was a couple of months ago, you know, I, I was reading, I, I, I guess, oh, well, one, there was a lot of bankruptcies, um, like Brooks Brothers, and uh, there's probably mm-hmm. a other. I, I can't quite recall them all. But, you know, I guess some I don't know if it was you know marketing or, or whatnot, but some happened to say, "Wow, this was a great quarter." When I don't really know how how, but maybe they you know fudge the, maybe it's creative accounting or whatever. But um, a, a bit all over the place, and and um, I, well, for for me, I, I've seen not only some impacts to well, all those are kind of big companies, but even for some of the smaller places that I was working with. A lot of them have temporary cl- temporarily closed. I- I'm not sure if I know any that have completely closed and aren't to return. But you know, it's we, we haven't really solved the problem yet, so I don't I don't know that that could potentially happen. Um, but you know, uh, there are a lot of folks who are older. Um, maybe you know, uh, there are a lot of older folks in in the fashion clothing industry, and, and like 60s, 70s, uh, even, and they they, they kind of. Th- figured well i mean they weren't working for a couple months and you know for one reason or another maybe they had heart troubles or you know they just realized well the business was slow anyway they just kind of called it quits um and so this was their last they they retired this year so uh at at least from my perspective most of the folks i've worked with and maybe it's because they're smaller shops they were older folks and and they were kind of irreplaceable (laughs) I, i really don't know um, I mean, fortunately, they had maybe you know one person or two, uh, another person with the same skill set. But some of them were like independent folks, and and they just kind of decided, I- I'm done. Um, I-, I don't know if um, you have any perspective or or when I, in, in my head, it's like, wow, that's kind of a big blow because you know a, a lot of folks in the industry are older. I mean, clothing was still kind of big in I guess the the 70s, at least American made. And so, you know, you would still get people that started in the 70s working now, but maybe around the 90s or, or so, get, I don't really, I'm not an expert, but in my head in the 90s, making clothes in the U.S. was not really a big thing. So um, once you get this older generation that's gone, th- there really is no next generation, so to speak, of folks to kind of take their place. That, but, I mean, by the time that happened, and I mean, in the U.S., it didn't seem like you know, it was a smart time to jump in that particular industry. So I, I don't know. In, in my head, I'm kind of wondering, well, if th- that older generation that's still around is, is gone, I don't know. There's not really that, um, they, they, I don't know, the apprentices or whatnot to kind of take over that there was kind of this empty gap in the U.S. I, again, I, I'm just guessing here, and I probably rambled on 
far more than I should have. But that's those were kind of my thoughts. I don't know if you have any um, you well, know, anything it, about this or anything yeah. to say. Yeah, I, I mean that's it. It's pretty obvious when you when you look around the landscape of uh, what's happened because we you know we we I mean the fashion industry in general. I was just having this conversation earlier today with um, a writer from uh, um, sort of a local publication that uh, we do here in the state of Pennsylvania. But the uh, the clothing industry as a you know, as a general industry, I mean, it, it, it's all about getting it done at the cheapest possible price. I mean, they just keep chasing cheap labor everywhere they can, you know, whether it's, uh, you know, they're, they're Korea's or Japan or Taiwan or Vietnam, Bangladesh, India, wherever, uh, Hungary, Budapest. Uh, so um, the, they're, they're, I wouldn't say they're necessarily cutting their throats. I mean, they're, the, I guess the people who are doing it well are make are being profitable and whatnot. But there's no, there's there's no real emphasis, especially on the needle trades and things like what I do and certain things. I mean, there's tech schools that teach automotive, which is good, obviously, and I guess air conditioning and refrigeration and perhaps uh, plumbing and building uh, trades and things like that, but needle trades and and uh, shoemaking and shoe design and things like that, I know they sort of touch a little bit uh, on it uh, in at Parsons and at FIT, but I think it's sort of done under our own umbrella of uh, accessory design and or fashion accessories or whatever, whatever the uh, names that they attach to it. So uh, everybody's frustrated that, yeah, what am I going to do? Oh, gosh, there's no shoemakers anymore. And I said, yeah, they're all in the cemetery. That's, uh, but um, same thing with tailors. I mean, you go once upon a time, New York used to be a, a huge, huge place where you could find good custom tailors, almost anywhere in, in the city. And uh, now the, the, the one you can maybe count them, I don't know, on one hand, a uh, hand and a half. <laughs> so it's, it's a, it's a definitely a struggle for people who need quality work and who want quality work and want something to their individual tastes. Um, so it's, it's, it's not easy. And I don't care whether it's shirt making or, suit making and whatever it's uh it, i don't know what's going to become of it but uh, i i know there are a new generation of young people who are interested in trades and the arts and some of the craft and things like that whether that will uh, sort of grow out of some kind of a sort of grassroots movement if you want to call it that people will will rediscover some of this old school knowledge uh, i guess remains to be seen but you know the people like myself and as you're talking about the the custom tailors and needle and thread people you know we, we may all be gone by that who knows I, I don't know but there's just not enough emphasis um in uh, the schools about trades in general uh, for people who are just maybe not into the whole academic scene, that there's there are other options, but remains to be seen. It's uh, it be a rather curious uh, situation to see how that all plays out down the road. But uh, it's right now it's it's iffy at best, I would say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I'm not really sure if the impact um, it will. You know, be be obvious uh, anytime mm -hmm. soon, but you know, m maybe it's something that only becomes more obvious down the line. Uh, I mean, but like you said, this has kind of been going on for a while, and I guess you know, this is. I mean, I mean it's just more. Um, I don't know, a big bigger scenario where uh, a lot's just gone on this year, and so, mm -hmm. so, you know.
But <laughs> yeah, it's it's, good. it's 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 a tough world. Uh, I mean, re- regardless of what business you're in today, I uh, mean, maybe say for the, the banking business or the mortgage business or stocks and bonds, sort of Wall Street kind of players. Um, yeah, it's, it's it's. I mean, look what's happening in the restaurant business. I mean, I you know, give kudos to Tom Colicchio in New York uh, for uh, the work he's trying to do with trying to keep restaurants going i mean these are people that have skill sets that uh, are important and uh, you've got to feed people and you know, culinary arts are just as important as a lot of other arts whether it's shoe art or clothing art so mm-hmm. yeah everybody's kind of holding their collective breath i guess in some respects hey yeah and i think well you know it, it just occurred to me that um you know, i guess people wonder well what, what's the um uh, well, what's the issue if at least some place in the in the world um you can do you know they, they can make clothes we don't necessarily need to do that well i mean it, i mean it just occurred to me I, I haven't given this a whole lot of thought maybe you know one minute um as you were talking is uh you know without folks that can do those skills um here or, or nearby locally or in your community you're not going to get you know to, to, like designers um i mean they won't be able to design here they'll have to go somewhere else and, and i mean if you want to use your re- uh restaurant i don't know if um i mean if for some reason we didn't have cooks or, or whatnot you would just wouldn't have any like great chefs or, or no one would try to aspire to do that because it just, it just wouldn't work so i mean you i mean it's not only that i think the um the you know the seamstresses and and whatnot aren't here it's that you would lose the the visionaries, the the designers, the you know, the chefs, the the, the people mm-hmm. that make great things happen. That you know, kind of give mm-hmm. birth and ideas um, uh, to make things. something from nothing, right? And, and share them with the world. Like that would be lost. And and I think that I, I don't. I mean, that has I think some sort of value and is worth keeping. Um, I mean, I, I don't know how to quantify it in terms of dollars and cents because. I guess for some folks, that's the bottom line. So I don't really know how to do that, but uh, there's, I don't know. It, it would be a loss. It would certain, I think it would be a loss and we just wouldn't know it until it was gone. Um, yeah. Well, we don't, you know, imagine if, uh, you know, if all of the, the great artist masters of years ago just stopped painting for some reason or another, because they just didn't, you know, technique or whatever and you walk into a museum and you get blank walls. I mean, maybe the analogy is not quite spot on, but, Yes, these people, you know, you have to feed your soul somehow. And I'm not just talking literally, but uh, in, in the imagination and um, in your mind's eye and how you can create. So, I, I, you know, the, the fashion houses in Europe and certainly in, in Paris and London and Milan, I think they still are good um, – breeding grounds for creative energy for people in fashion, whether or not there's enough of that to go around for, you know, the masses. I, I don't know. Uh, maybe not the masses, maybe not quite the right, right term, but, uh, you know, people have to get inspired. And when they see things, whether it's a runway show or a photo shoot or something like that, it's, it's and, you know, where they pick up a piece of this, uh, incredible fabric, whether it's be some kind of silk or or whatever, that uh, it, it just inspires this uh, you know, creative burst. So that the, they, we need those arts, whether it's as I said, things that hang in museums or things that hang on people's bodies. Uh, it's all goes to make. Uh, the world a little more interesting and um, delightful. Mm-hmm. Yeah, certainly. Um, you know, and not not necessarily to um, <laughs> be be auditing uh, you, but I, I'm I'm kind of curious. Like, uh, has this year had an impact on on you on I don't know your your business or I mean, have, have you considered? Well, maybe this is the year I should just hang it up. Um, I, I'm I'm you know maybe for audiences that are kind of interested in your shoes or have heard about you we're just kind of putting it off that oh i mean i I know for me some people just uh, say oh they'll they'll be around i can when i have you know maybe in like a couple years i'll I'll go that's one of those things like uh i'm I'm sorry i i 
asking one question and then just going somewhere else. But um, it, it, it's, I don't know, kind of kind of like um, one of those things where, oh, I can always procrastinate and get around to it. They'll be around. And I mean, with a lot of kind of independent type makers or, or smaller makers, that's not necessarily the case. I mean, even back when I was doing um, music release of like, oh, that release, I can get that, you know, in a, in a month or so. And then it's like a small release. It's, it's gone. And it's like a very limited run and you, you never find it again. And um, I mean, similar with what I was saying with some factories closing, I mean, who knows, maybe it's not temporary. Maybe they're actually gone and then you'll miss that um, opportunity, miss that chance. You'll never have worked with those folks or, or gotten what you need. And by putting it off, uh, I mean, it's come back to bite me. I mean, because these aren't like mass produced things that kind of stay around forever. These, they kind of have, um, you know, they, they really are temporary and you really don't realize it until it's gone. Um, so it was, anyway, back, backtracking. Um, what about you? What about, I mean, you for this year, any, I don't know, I don't know any thoughts of calling it quits or, or whatnot, or I don't know. Just... I I real well, you know. Sometimes when my body's aching or my hands are hurting and things like that, I think to myself, "Ooh, wouldn't it be nice to be somewhere in the South Pacific on a nice island, <laughs> lapping up some nice coconut milk or something?" But um, I I really I mean I like what I do. I I, I really enjoy making and creating and I as much as I sometimes think my body's taking a beating and should I keep getting up every morning and doing my workouts and getting myself ready for the day uh the answer is yes I I would miss it I think because I've been working so long um pretty much from the time I was a fairly little guy you know um I I just I wouldn't know what to do with myself. I, I mean, I'd like, I like to be lazy once in a while, but it, uh, yeah, it only lasts for a few days maybe or whatever. But consequently, uh, you know, I like the, I like the creative energy that working at a specific task of, of design and, and, and working the leather and whatnot gives me it to, to, to cause you see a completed product and it, and you know, gives you a, a nice sense of, of being, I guess. And I think that for me, uh, it'd be hard for me to just walk away as much as sometimes, as I said, my my body tells me, <laughs> give me a break. So, um, uh, so I'm going to keep going. I'll go as, as as long as I can and see see what where I can take myself with it. So uh, little by little, we'll, we'll just you know, as I said, take it. Take it one month at a time, and uh, yeah, it's been as you alluded to earlier. It's been a, a tough year, and still some you know tough months ahead yet for small businesses like myself and others who do these kinds of um, crafts and artisan work and whatnot. So uh, I guess the jury's out, and um, but. For me, um, I'm, I'm not thrown in the towel, and I still want to still want to work because I like what I do, and I like interacting with my clients and new customers. Um, but yes, it's it's these days and weeks and months are, are challenging to say the least. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, I guess there's always that light at the end of the rainbow, which you know, I mean, it, at some point. It, things will get better. We, we shall see when they will. <laughs> when, Absolutely, when will is. get better. Yeah, you know, it's we shall see how that happens and, and when that happens. But well, I'm, I'm glad to hear that you know you're sticking sticking around and, and sticking yeah. with it because I, I also wonder you know with some of the like the one person I was referring to. I mean, he I didn't realize he was 78 and he was still mm-hmm. um, doing what he was. I thought he was like at least a decade younger. I mean, 78 is pretty, mm-hmm. pretty old. And like we're just wondering. So okay, you're you're retired. How, oh man, what are you gonna do? I mean, in my head, I was wondering that. It was just you've been doing this for like five decades. Yeah, you know? a long time. I know. And, yeah. And, well, uh, I mean, yep, but, yep, yep. Yeah. Oddly enough, he well, had, as BB uh, as as BB King says, never make a move too soon. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I talked to him um, today, and it turns out 
he, I guess clients were returning and, and giving him a bunch of things to do. So he's, it seems like, you know, his one, he had one foot out, but you know, just mm-hmm. when he thought they thought uh, he thought he was out, they pulled him back in. So yeah, yeah. we'll see. Potentially, yeah. Well, you thing. know, we don't, you know, I think people who do these things, they, you know, they, they enjoy, they enjoy the work. Sometimes it's quiet work. Sometimes it's, it's, uh, you know, a little busy, uh, maybe because of machinery or something like that, but it's, it's just the satisfaction of being able to do something in a way that is, um, very well done and make somebody happy and you've got, you know, a good result. And, 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 you know, that's, it's part of the joy that people I think who work with their hands and who are artisans um, appreciate and, and, and maybe they don't always hear it from the particular customer or, that they're doing something for, but there's a there's a, a certain sense of satisfaction of a job well done, and, and I think as there should be because re- really you're making dreams come true, you know. To some degree, things. yes. Yeah, yes. I mean, this is all in someone's mind, and and uh, they've been thinking about it, and uh, you know, for who knows how long, and you've made it happen. Uh, and I think that goes for a lot of folks in the clothing industry. Like you're making someone's dreams come true. Like clothing is something most people, you know, ha- ha- they have a particular idea and they're making it come true. That's, I mean, that that's a pretty unique position to be in. So I think it's, you know, kudos to you for all, all the things that you've done um, over, you know, your years of, of doing this. Well, it's it, it's nice to see a, a smile on a on a customer's face when when you can present them with the finished product. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I mean, I know I'm. I had a pleasant. You know, I, I this has been a huge huge pleasure, and I guess we're kind of running up to that uh, to that mark. So, but I think we ended on a high note today. So that's, that's yes, nice. yes. That's yeah. always a good thing. So, all right. Well, listen, we can continue this. Uh, I don't know about tomorrow. Maybe I can connect with you tomorrow. And if not, well, tomorrow's Friday, correct? It, that is correct. Uh, but we'll, we'll, yeah, yeah, so, whenever you feel but, like you okay. really have a sense of your schedule, let me know. Yes. Okay. I will do that. And um, I'll, at, point, uh, at some point, I guess, tomorrow, I'll uh, reach out to you with a text or whatever and uh, see what we can arrange for the near future, all right? Awesome. Thank you, Perry. You're quite welcome, Philip. You, if I don't speak with you in a directly, you have yourself a good weekend. All right, you do the same. Take care. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.